Hello, and welcome to day four of my Stronghold Kingdom's No Cards build log. The past day has been rather eventful in that I have really beefed up some of my military research. Let's take a look at it. I originally started out with only one point in Castellation. Over the period of the last 24 hours, I have increased it to three points in Castellation. This was to unlock defenses so I could research it to access the guardhouse. Now, I'm going to need to build a guardhouse in my castle if I wish to station or garrison more than 20 troops in it. So this is going to be critical in beefing up the defense of my castle. Fortification was already researched yesterday, so I'm not going to mention that again. Of course, <clears throat> command also, I have, now have access to archers and an army size of 20. And that pretty much covers it for the military tab. I should also move over here to the industry tab because this is, this is the only other area of um, research that I invested points in. And look at fletching. I have increased it to 6. Six, I've put a total of six points into it, I mean, <clears throat> which increases the productivity of fletching by, or bow making by 150%. I didn't do any research in education or farming because there basically was nothing new unlocked. And, wow, I'm just all scatterbrained right now. <clears throat> and research points continue to come in slower by the day as you advance research times are longer and you are getting fewer research points now i could afford <clears throat> to buy another research point but i have a couple here in the queue from recently ranking up which reminds me i reached yaleman fifth class today now yesterday you may remember i was a thane third grade so i i did make it i did move up an entire rank but that's not going to happen today obviously when I need 5,000 honor per rank, there's no way that I can do that. And I am going to need to buy more research points to keep my research going. 5,000 honor, I'm only making 8,300 a day, so I'm going to only hit one sub rank. So yeah, it's, it's getting slower, but I see some real progress happening. <clears throat> and here's the... Here's what I currently have for a castle. I built a lot of little towers or <clears throat> little lookout towers around it because lookout towers are both cheap and quick to build, and yet they can only be taken down by catapults. So anybody who attacks with just pikemen or peasants are going to have a hard time of getting through it because, well, they're not going to have a hard time of getting through it. It's the points of entry are more concentrated. Not all the units will be able to attack the castle at the same time they'll stop at the towers naturally as far as the village itself goes i built an additional brewery because once again i built an additional hovel this increased my population by eight and i needed more ale which is rather interesting that i mentioned ale i shouldn't jump all over the place like this but i'm currently ranked 14 in the packets produced for ale fort number 14 brewer yeah, you can place high in the leaderboard. Unfortunately, I do not get an achievement for that because the server hasn't been in play for 30 days, I think it is. The server has to be up and going for 30 days. Otherwise, apparently, there are just too many people that can just jump all over the board and get those, the number one achievement. Okay, so in addition to the brewery that I built and the hovel, I also built an additional three stone quarries, which are going to increase the stone production at almost on par with wood production. As you can see here, I have nine wood cutters huts and I have 14 stone quarries and they're both producing 11,000, give or take 11,000 goods, 11,000 packets. No, it's not a, it's not a packet. <clears throat> a packet is a thousand wood or a thousand stone. 11,000 stone, 11,000 wood per day. My apple production continues to um, go down because basically I didn't build any more farms and I'll need to prioritize that 
if I wish to continue selling apples, although the price continues to crash, it is now down to around uh, 100 gold per packet of apples. As <clears throat> far as the fletching goes, <clears throat> with the research I completed, I am now making 9 bows per day. This is up from 4 bows per day yesterday. So as you can see, the research really does pay off, and I'm also building a second Fletcher's workshop, which will be completed today, and that will also be producing bows. So I'm going to be making a lot of archers to help defend my keep, my castle. Taking a look at the quests completed yesterday, I only, <clears throat> only managed to do two, which given my circumstances is probably pretty above average. Gathering Materials 1 and Construction Crazy 3. I actually didn't believe I was going to make Construction Crazy 3 because ha getting the resources to construct five buildings in a well-developed village... <laughs> yeah, I use the term likely. A well-developed village such as this, uh, it takes some time to, to do. I didn't think... I also, you'll notice the keep has upgraded. It's now a village... The village hall is upgraded visually. It really doesn't. Nothing else happens. It just looks different. And you'll notice that uh, this is probably the rarest one. You don't see this one a whole lot. So I'm just going to do a quick recap of the research here. It was a bit scattered before. I completed or I researched fletching up to level six. I researched command up to level two. I researched castellation up to level three. The buildings I completed were three stone quarries for a total of 14, one brewery now for a total of five, and an additional hovel for a total of four. Being as how I'm in a, a faction and a house, these people are nice enough to invite me, I, I now have a liege lord and a vassal, both within the house. So. The best way to get a good vassal and a good liege lord are to stay within the house because if you move outside of that and then you're, you become enemies with them or you have to remove them for whatever reason, it just makes things awkward. If they're a vassal of yours and they're outside of the house, they, they can drop you more likely because there's, there's no house tie there. If they are your liege lord, they can use your village to attack other players from it and that can lead to conflicts if they're attacking a friendly person a person friendly to your house with it so i recommend staying within faction or house because because this is a, a faction member the little it's a red flower icon but staying within the faction or the house for your liege lords and vassals i still haven't taken over the parish of wilmington Although I probably, I likely will do so in the future as its current steward is only a freeman and they have been playing for roughly the same amount of time that I have and their village is pretty small. So apparently they're not logging in much at all anymore. If you look at my village, it is a considerable, it has grown a couple sizes since I showed it to you yesterday. Wait, you know, it actually only has grown one size because I only managed to place six buildings the size of the visual representation of the village on the map only increases with every six buildings placed so yeah it would be impossible for it to increase two sizes since I've only placed five buildings I believe well that's pretty much it I suppose I hope to have the research completed to allow me to station a good few archers on my walls Unfortunately, I don't think I'll have the research points to increase castellation all the way up to level 7 by the end of my peacetime, but I'll probably have a nice little fortress here that, that will at least deter the passive, more passive player from attacking in me because this is, I have a larger village, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the map, so it, it would be a target. Of course, since I'm in a house, that will also mitigate the likelihood of me being scouted for an attack, but... I mean, if there were enemies around and stuff, I haven't, I don't think anyone is marked as an enemy yet. But, uh, I, I'm, I want to show you what it would be like if you didn't have a house. It is important not to neglect your defenses too much, because if your house does enter into a war, that's basically, like, two big players fighting against each other, you could be a target <clears throat> due to the fact that your village castle just isn't up to snuff. So, I recommend continuing down the, the path that I went on even if you are in a house because it is good 
experience is good practice. It, it's just it's a good practice to get into doing to sort of balance your economy and your castle at the same time. It is a bit tricky when you don't have cards, but I think as this video series or this video log proves it can be done to some extent. So with that said, I won't detain you any longer. Thank you very much for watching if you made it this far. If you have any questions or feedback about the video, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Stronghold Kingdoms. The battle has just begun.